Yo, what's going on people? King Riches back again with another video, yeah. Big up to the old subscribers, new subscribers and everybody that supports the channel positively. All right, this is going to be a very informative, educational video. Uh, this is going to be specifically important for any guys out there who are thinking about traveling, who are passport bros and are thinking about going to Colombia in hopes of maybe dating or finding a, a nice girl to spend time with. Bro, like, I need you to understand that there are a lot of dangers out there. And to be to be quite frank with you, a lot of passport bros are being targeted by criminal organizations to be robbed. All right. And so um, we are going to review a few videos which are going to be highlighting these uh, incidents, these problems. And I think it's very, very important. So please, please, please hit the like button if you find content like this valuable. I think this is going to be very eye opening for a lot of you. And I want I just want to say this from the top. You know, I am not against passport bros. I am not against people traveling to Colombia I'm in no way, shape or form got any kind of like you know resentment to anybody like at the end of the day i think it's important for people to to gain an awareness of what's really going on in, in the world because you know if you go on youtube you see a lot of um videos which are basically just talking about how much fun guys are having going to Colombia, going to places like Medellin and Cartagena in particular, and how they're just meeting all these uh, gorgeous Colombian women and dating them is so easy and it's so simple and stuff like that. But the reality is there's a, a very different dark side to, um, you know, dating in, in a foreign country. And there's a lot of risks and dangers waiting for you. Right. So I think that this is going to be a very important video. So again, please, everybody hit the like button um, so that YouTube promotes this to more people. This is very, very important. We're going to jump into the first video right now. And everybody watching, please shout out where you're listening from in the chat. Um, let me know where you're listening from around the world. Let me know if you are a passport bro or somebody, if you've been to Colombia or you're thinking about going there, uh, let me know. Anyway, let's jump into this video right now. Let's not waste no more time. It feels like every single week there is a new tourist or foreigner that has died in Medellin. I've been counting. It's been like eight weeks, nine weeks in a row now where somebody has died. And I think one of the biggest stories was this Asian guy. He recently got killed and his body thrown into a river. So it just really got me thinking like what the heck is going on in Medellin right now? Is this a whole entire Colombia thing? Is it just a Medellin thing? And I wanted to share some of my thoughts about it. If I'm being honest, I think Medellin has changed a lot. I remember when I arrived in 2020, I think it was slowly turning into what it's become now. But right after the pandemic, the borders opened up again and it just felt like there were just waves of tourists coming into the country. And I'm be real, the majority of these tourists are coming in for the women and the partying. Now, let me just give you a lot of context. This guy is actually um, a guy that lives in Colombia. In this video, he's in London currently, but um, he actually, because I watched this, some of his videos, he actually lives in Colombia. He's actually got um, a wife in Colombia as well. So he knows what he's talking about. I talk about this all the time on my channel and I'm not going to say that I'm going to like judge people coming for that. I don't think people are fully educated enough in Colombian culture, especially in a place like Medellin or Cali. And they kind of glorify Colombia like it's this haven, this really awesome place to live. And I guess in some respects, I was also a contributed to that but i feel like i've also done my due diligence in explaining how the culture is all the good and the bad from both sides so people can get a better perspective of what it's really like to live in colombia now something that does bug me and has bugged me for a while is seeing all these creators come into the country make content about colombia but almost none of them speak any spanish and i will say this bro like be, being in a country where you do not speak their language is like bro like you're just asking for trouble like me personally, I would feel so uncomfortable to be in a, in a place where I do not understand what the fuck anybody's saying, bro. Like my my level of of um, reading, listening, speaking is like basically infants, like a kid level, bro. Like you're you're at a severe disadvantage in my opinion. So you know, all you guys that go to these countries and you don't speak the language, bro. Like you're you're really putting yourself in danger, in my opinion. You know, people could be saying anything about you. They could be standing right in front of you, setting you up, and you have no clue. 
and some of them are my friends so i mean this with all respect a lot of the things that they are telling you about how great the country is and everything uh, is kind of exaggerated and super hyped up i felt this way too when i first got to colombia right like it just felt like a really amazing place to be it was the first time i lived in a different country it was before covid so it, it was like thriving it was just such an amazing time in a different scene but after being there for three and a half years you guys have followed on my channel you know i've had a lot of very negative experiences it really changes your opinion on what you think of the country and i think that's why now when i talk about colombia sometimes it does seem like it's a little bit jaded but once i had a negative experience and literally almost everything that i've done you know real estate company scammed by multiple lawyers the whole entire thing that happened with the church thankfully you know i never got drugged or you know never was put in a precarious situation but that's because i never went looking for women on like dating apps or some of these places where most of the gringos go and get targeted I and that's the thing this is the thing most of these guys, yeah, most of these guys that are getting messed up, they're, they're getting robbed and etc, etc. Yeah, these are guys that are going, really and truly, they're going there to get pussy. Let's keep it real. They're going there to go and get sex. They're going there because they feel like their, their dollars, their, their home currency is stronger there. So they can basically live it up and basically live like a king or like, you know, some high value man over there and that they think that the women are going to be falling over themselves trying to get with them. But really and truly, you're just making yourself a target, just like he's saying right here. I do have to say, though, that now that we're almost into 2024, Medellin has completely changed, man. Like every time I go back, I feel like it's grown a lot economically and i feel like it's developed quite a bit so you know credit where it's due i remember when i went to peru a lot of people were telling me about colombia this was in like 2016 i think how they were pleasantly surprised by medellin the buddy that i'm staying with right now ocean he said that when he came in 2017 he felt that medellin was super safe super fun to be at but now it's completely changed Medellin culture, unfortunately, the narco roots are so strong within that city. You are in your own little bubble in a place like Poblao when you're surrounded by other expats or wealthy Colombians. You only see a small part of what that Colombian culture is. You're really in a bubble. And even the Colombians there will admit that. But once you start interacting with the people from the barrios and you kind of see what the culture is like, just talk to any taxi driver and ask them what the culture is like in Colombia and Medellin. They'll all tell you the same thing about how the women are, you know, how a lot of them are kind of gold diggers and only want you for money they're how nobody's faithful how it's extremely unsafe and these are only things that you can know if you had a bad experience which many people are now finding out my friends and i we like to say that if you spend enough time in colombia it's only a matter of time before you get robbed or something bad happens to you and i'm hearing that as well i'm hearing that from a lot of different sources bruh it the longer you stay there the higher the probability something bad is going to happen to you. Like something is just, it's inevitable. Like, and that's crazy because even bad things are happening to the local people there too. Like it's real. You just talk to the locals. They will tell you there are certain parts of Colombia that they love. And Colombians are super proud to be in Colombia because there's just a vibe in the air that's amazing. And I don't disagree with that at all. But you can never downplay how crazy and intense the security issues are in that country. And I feel like it's only gotten worse. And this is why on my channel, I'm very, very strongly against dating apps. I always say, learn the language, meet people in social groups, have your friends introduce you. Because right now, in my opinion, it feels like the risk is just too high for something bad happening to you or getting killed i don't know how many foreigners need to die before people start waking up to the actual dangers of going to colombia and getting tied up with the wrong girl and this is what i'm saying bro like this is what i'm saying right just type in youtube medellin colombia or colombia nightlife or medellin nightlife or any of this stuff and you see all these videos and in particular you see a lot of black guys making these videos talking about how they're dating all these girls and blah 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 but bro like uh, to me i think that they're really exaggerating the the situation and trying to make it look one-sided when really and truly there's a very dark side i mean at the end of the day i'm hearing a lot of stories of like people losing their lives they're being deleted people are going over there in particular guys are going over there hoping to date beautiful women and they're not coming home, bruv. They're not coming home. And it's, it's just, like, bro, like, is it really worth it just to get some box? You know, is it really worth your life?
yeah just to get some box and as i and as i said to you guys already in my in my new year's resolution video that i put out on the first of this year bro one of the resolutions that you lot need to understand yeah or one of the key points that you need to understand is that women are dangerous women are dangerous bro like is, this is not a joke at all this is not a laughing matter i'm not saying this to be red pill or blue pill or any pill bro this is just the facts and a lot of guys are so obsessed by box that they are losing their lives going halfway across the world to another country where they don't even speak the language because they've seen some youtube videos where there's some girls that look pretty in hopes that you're gonna land you a, a really beautiful girlfriend or you're gonna live like you're in a music video for two weeks. Bro, you may not come back. It might be a Final Destination type movie. This is serious, bruv. And the best way I always describe it is that it's like Russian roulette, right? Because you can have a really amazing experience in Colombia, but if it's your turn, something really, really bad can happen to you, like armed robbery, getting drugged. And I've been even read stories of people just not even in the clubs, but people just moving in their everyday life, getting drugged at the grocery store, getting drugged, you know, just talking to some guy on the street. Like it's getting pretty crazy. That's why I'm so thankful of DC Born Rob's content because he seems like to be the only guy commenting about these situations now that i've left i love colombia just as much as anybody and i still would recommend you living in colombia even after everything that happened to me but you have to take the safety concerns into account so with all that being said is colombia still worth moving to to be honest i think the answer is yes but it's very dependent okay if you just want to go for a couple months to kill some time and you know have fun party and stuff that's cool you just have to be extremely careful try to avoid meeting girls on dating apps i know I, I keep saying that all the time and i know guys won't listen because that seems to be the very popular way to meet people nowadays but yeah because it's easy it's easy to make a dating app it's easy to just match with people and oh a girl is look nice looking match you know use google translate to talk to them it's harder for for a guy to actually learn the language learning the language is not going to be easy bruv <laughs> Do you get what i'm saying it's not going to be easy to be like oh yeah mi canta hablas espanol do you know what i'm saying it's not going to be easy you know so but like it, it's a lot of guys are still gonna run that risk they're still gonna roll the dice bro like because because pussy that's why anyway to me it's just way too risky to meet a girl like that and even going to the clubs right like in the us you can approach people at the clubs or in europe you know you can uh, meet somebody talk to them and go home with them same day one night stand that is so rare in colombia because people normally go out in groups it is possible to find a good girl there i have friends who have successful relationships and met women in colombia and they're very very happy but it seems to be the vast minority and a lot of guys who go there will end up getting played or robbed or in a worst case scenario killed that's scary bruv that's scary. That is scary. I'm going to move on to the next video, man. Everybody watching, make sure you hit the like button, man. This video is going to save somebody's life, bro. Real talk. I'm big up to um, this guy who we've just been re reacting to. His, na his name on YouTube is Where's Wes. Where's Wes, uh, W-E-S, question mark. And yeah. So uh, let's move on to the next, the next one. And this is a video that some of you lot have seen already. Um, but... It's, it's time that we react to it together. So let's get into this. Damn. You know, I was around some people who basically, you know, they was takers. And I'm in this country and I respect this country. So yeah, I'm gonna pay to see the country. You know what I'm saying? I, I'm respecting the place. So I had a tour guide damn near. And I'm buying them food. I'm paying for his gas. I'm giving him money to spend. I don't know what he's spending it on. I'm not even asking. I'm just trying to learn about this country. And I'm depending on him to keep me safe. And he took me up to some mountains and to see the fireworks. And, you know, I had my camera. My camera like $3,000. I had my 
GoPro. I have my other iPhone that I just bought, vest, everything. You know what I'm saying? First of all, why are you taking all this mad expensive stuff? Like, bro, like, even I know, yeah, from my own research about Colombia and all of these kind of South American countries, bro, you don't want to be walking around with expensive things. Like, to me, that kind of sounds kind of naive on your part. Obviously, this is just the beginning of your story and you felt like you were safe with people. But, bro, like... You're already talking about three thousand pound camera and or dollar camera. And you bought a new iPhone and you bought a new this and new that and you're walking around with it, bro. Like, I mean, that's asking for trouble, in my opinion. And I love him. I love Andres. And it hurt my heart because I went to his mom's shop and she, I, I let her do my nails. She told me fifteen mil. I gave her 40 and told her muchas gracias, showing respect. And I just feel like I spelled respect throughout this whole time. And I feel like my friend took me to the mountains to either hold me for ransom, I don't know, do something, because it just didn't seem right. First thing that the owner of the Airbnb asked me, or, or, were you on drugs or were you intoxicated or did you... I'm like, man, if anybody know me, they know that I'm on point. But I don't know motherfucking drugs. I'm not intoxicated. I'm not, I'm not doing none of that shit. And that's the first thing he questioned me about on um, why I did what I did. And I'm going to get to doing what I, I'm going to get to doing what I did. I'm walking. We go. First, this is how the story go. Andres get on my bike because I had a bike. And then he was like, ride with me and we're going to ride to the mountains to go see the fireworks. I asked him, which camera should I bring? He picked the most expensive camera. All right. I brought my GoPro, got my iPhone, got my vest and everything. We get up there. I, I meet some, um, some, 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 some um, Morenos like me, you know, black folks. And I get to talking to them and I'm telling bro, like, hey, you know, I'm going to give you uh, the camera. Uh, cause I got another one cause he like all my cameras and shit. I had an extra GoPro. I was going to give it to him. I was just happy seeing somebody that looked like me. And then his sister spoke English. But after that, you know, we were walked up all the way to the, um, to the top of this mountain and it was hella Colombians. You know what I'm saying? Gangsters, you know, people like, just say if you're from East Oakland, it's going to be like that. And if you're from East Oakland, you know that you safe, but I'm up in Colombia and these are Spanish people and they're not used to seeing a person of color like me with uh, valuable things on them. Like I'm walking around with a $3,000 camera. I got to be- Bro, I don't understand why you, you kept flaunting around your $3,000 camera. I don't understand. Like, bro, you basically was walking around like, like uh, bro, a mark. You was just a mark, bro. Like, like you talking about you're always on point. But you wasn't always on point because you was in Colombia, which is well known for a lot of crime. And you was walking around there as a foreigner, a black man at that, a foreigner walking around with a GoPro, an expensive camera, an expensive phone. Like, bruh, like, I don't understand, bruh, I don't get it, bruv. Be smarter, but I put so much trust in my, in my friend, Andres, mi hermano. That's not me, hermano, no mas. Bro, he wasn't your friend, bro. He was a guy that you was giving money to to take you around Colombia. And I'd have to ask, where, how did you even meet this guy, Andreas? How did you meet him? Like, where did, where did you know him from? Because he obviously wasn't your friend because he was bringing you into more danger. Por qué? Because he left me. And it's crazy because it was three of us. It was Andres, Hermanito, and me, and his girl. Hermanito had a girl, that's Andres' little brother. Embraced him, gave him a hug, everything, and we all went together. Bruh, you wouldn't even do this in London. Look, bruh, this story already sounds dumb. I'm sorry, bro. Like, with all due respect, respect to this guy, what's this guy's name? What is this guy's name, bruv? Um, all right, the name of his YouTube channel is Hanif Sadiq, yeah? 
Bro, with all due respect, even if you came to London, you wouldn't, you should not be walking around with £3,000 camera, uh, GoPro and the newest iPhone, walking around aimlessly with people that you don't know properly. Because whatever you're going to talk about is going to happen in Colombia. It can happen in London as well. And I'm sure it can happen in any state in America as well. So why would you think that you are okay to do that in Colombia, where they speak a whole different language? Like, you don't have no understanding of, of the levels there. Like, oh my God, that, this story is just mad. We saw the fireworks. It was cool. I had some videos on it on the cameras they stole from me. But after the night started getting, like, closer down, Everybody start leaving and you got to think we on this big ass mountain. They got stairs. So it's it's packed. We can't even get through Harmony and Nito and his girl they somewhere and me and Andres to the side just looking around and I'm just looking around cuz I'm like damn I'm in Colombia on the top of a mountain and I'm in a barrio I didn't been to the barrio before but I ain't never been that high It's so high to where like bro, it's gonna take some time to get down to the regular city, bro like these people is you know, they mafia, you know. Let me tell you one thing. If I was going Colombia, if I was there, I'm not going to no top of no mountain, some, some place, bro. Like, what do you mean? Like, to see some fireworks, bro. Bro, I could, I could buy fireworks and let them off in my back garden. Why do I need to go to the top of this mountain, to this, this ambiguous, anonymous mountain, bro? With some guy that I hardly know. And I'm taking all my expensive, valuable stuff. And I'm a black man. Like, I'm sorry, nah, fam. That, that's, that's not good enough. And I respect it. And, you know, I ain't got no problem. But I was just in the wrong territory at the wrong time. So I'm just telling people, like, just don't be in places you know you shouldn't be unless you prepare. And that's why I think a lot because he prepared me to be physically fit to get away from these people. Because after the night went... We went up, took some pictures and shit. You know what I'm saying? And um, I took some pictures of everybody, his brothers, and I got to talking. And um, somehow Andres' friends was right there. And I remember meeting him at the, um, cause he worked on motos or whatever. And they all chilling. We chilling. I don't speak Spanish like them. Like I speak Spanish, but you gotta go despacio. You gotta go slow so I could hear you and I could see what word match up with the verb. But they talking hella fast and in slang and stuff. They asking me questions and they talking about me. I don't know exactly what they're saying, but they wasn't saying friendly things about me. You know what I'm saying? They yeah, because you don't speak the language. You don't speak the language or you don't speak it well enough to understand when people are setting you up in front of you. But that that is so scary to me, bro. Like. Just being, just imagine, imagine being amongst all these people and you know they're actually like gangsters. Yeah, you know these are people that they don't, <laughs> they don't value your life at all. And they don't really have no fear of like, of the law and stuff like that. And then you're around them and they're, they're talking fast. They're talking to you. You don't even know what they're saying. You kind of know they're talking about you, but you don't know exactly what they're saying. Bro, that's a scary situation to be in, bro. You, are, you would never find King Riches in that situation. Never. Like, you, you, bro, this guy went there. He, had, he, didn't, he didn't go there with anyone that he knew properly. This is crazy, bro. Y'all laughing in my face. And, and, um, so I'm just chilling. I'm just being respectful. I'm in their country. I'm in their body. I don't want no problems. I'm, I came with Andres. I just came to see fireworks. These motherfuckers get to ask me, oh, you want to snort some coke or you want to do this? I'm like, bro, I just smoke weed. You know what I'm saying? And then he like, this is what we all do, basically. And he's saying this in Spanish to me. He like, it's fit. you know, if you fucking with us, you got to fuck with this. And before Andres, a couple days before, he asked me, do I snort coke? And I told that nigga, nunca. Nunca. Yo, yo amo mi alma. Mi respeto, mi cuerpo. That's what I told him to his face. I'm out, I'm out here standing on principles. You feel me? And it's like, how you can't respect somebody like that? So long story short, on today's, he with his friends, right? I'm with them. We all walking. And I tell today's like, man, I'm ready to leave. You feel me? He taking hella long. 
they all, you know, he get the t walking away, texting. I'm looking, his friends looking at me, trying to keep me occupied. But I'm like, shit, I'm trying to get up out of here, bro. I'm at the top of a, of a mountain on a barrio, and we still gotta walk hella far to get back down to even the bike. And and I'm and I, and I just thought, I'm like, bro, I'm in narco land. Like, I'm up here, like, where they got it going on, pretty much. You know what I'm saying? I'm like, fuck. I start seeing niggas who high as fuck off Chris, nigga, Coke, nigga, everything. So I start walking. I'm walking past everybody. And then, you know, they all know each other, so this shit regular to them. It's not regular to me to be around a whole bunch of Colombians who are not really in the... Bro, you put yourself there, man. Like, bro, like, this, this story, bro. Big up to Tyrone James for the super chat. He says, if I was in Colombia, I would go to... Poor, poor rural areas, bro. If I was in Colombia, I'll tell you now, if I was in Colombia, I'm staying in the tourist areas and that's it, fam. Because that's essentially what I am. I'm a foreigner. If I don't speak the language fluently, bro, me going around, going to barrios or going to the top of mountains or going to rural areas, bro, like you're, you're asking for trouble. Something, bro, like, there's a lot of things that can go wrong and only a few things that can go right. <laughs> Simple as that. High class. You know what I'm saying? Niggas mugging me. Niggas looking at my camera. Niggas barking at me and shit. You know what I'm saying? I'm like, man, this shit crazy. So I'm trying to get down. On today's... Told this guy said that they were barking at him like a dog. They were barking at him. Flipping hell. That's crazy. His little brother to leave with his girl. So I walked in, walk away. I said, bro, we not going with them? He said, nah, it's late. We're going to let them go home. Red flag. I'm like, damn, we all came together. Why we not leaving together? But he want me to stay with him and his friends. You feel me? Y'all putting that shit together? These niggas trying to kill me, bro. I'm like, damn, I'm all the way up here. I got all this shit on me. Nigga, they just going to take it and kill me. So I was like, bro, I started walking. I was like, man, I'm ready to go. I started walking. The niggas look like they wanted to do something to me right now, but you know, Despacio, niggas like, man, we gonna take it slow with this nigga. We don't know what he capable of. Y'all got the, I got my knife on me. You know what I'm saying? I'm like, I'm ready to break a couple niggas down on my mama. So I get to walking, and then I get to like walking hella fast. Then the niggas start doing little whistles. The niggas start doing little whistles. I was like, fuck, man. Heart start beating hella fast. I'm like, I'm in Colombia on the top of a mountain. All these niggas got probably straps on them. They off coke, nigga, Chris, nigga. They not finna remember what they want to do, what they did to me or why they did what they did to me. Them niggas like, man, I want that camera. I want that phone. I want everything on that nigga, and then we gonna kill him. And I'm like, it's no way if they get me, like, surrounded or, 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 or like, barbated that I'm gonna be able to get out. So I started walking like along the edge of the mountain. But let, let me tell you, all these people that was following me was sitting still at first. You know what I'm saying? Like they was just chilling. But as I'm walking, shit, niggas looking at me. I'm looking at them, I'm walking. Then I'm looking back, I don't see Andres. Then I see his friend talking about, hey, come back, come back. I'm like, nah, I ain't coming back. So I kept walking. And then I came back a little bit and I was like, where Andres? Nobody said nothing. One nigga came up, tried to touch me, <clears throat> broke him down, got up out of there. Other nigga tried to grab me, I <clears throat> got up out of there and I jumped off the mountain. And when I jumped off the mountain, my leg broke, right? This guy just said he jumped off the mountain, bro. <sighs> this guy said he jumped off the mountain. How do you just jump off the mountain, bro? Jump off the mat into where? This story is a bit mad. Anyway, let's carry on. Right. My leg broke. I, st I came back to the street park. Now his leg has broken. Because I seen regular people that didn't look like they was like a gang member or nothing. But I'm asking people to help me because my leg broke. A nigga ride past me with his bitch and was laughing and said, stupid though. Another lady walking with her kid, basically shaking her head like, muerte. That mean death, you feel me? 
his friend come running after me now and I'm running away from him on one leg jumping and then the nigga grabbed me when he grabbed me I uh, fuck up off me nigga but I fell cause my leg broke so I uh, clipped my leg back into place so I could kind of like at least lean a little bit of weight on it but use all the weight on my left leg and I got the running again and then my shit snapped again and then I had to re straighten my shit out again so I was like fuck whatever I could do and I your leg wasn't broken, bruv. Your leg wasn't broken. Maybe it was dislocated or, or something, but your leg was not broken. Because if your leg was broken, fam, you would not be running nowhere. It doesn't matter how much weight you distribute to the other leg. You would not be able... Bro, in the chat, any of you in the chat, have any of you broken a leg before, bruv? Bro, like, how... Like... Anybody that's even sprained their ankle, bro, think about this. I've sprained my ankle, bro, yeah, playing American football, right? Bro, like, when you have any kind of injury to your leg, you don't want to put any pressure on that, let alone to run. <laughs> this guy said that he jumped off the mountain and then he started running and he had a little tussle with another guy. Then he started running on one leg, bro, like, I don't know, fam. I don't know about that. Maybe, you know, to be honest, when, when you're in fight or flight mode, you can do some amazing things. Like the human body, bruv, like adrenaline, bro. Like it can, it can make you forget about pain. But yeah, your leg was not broken. I, I can guarantee that it wasn't broken, fam. Seen the gate and I knew these niggas couldn't hit this gate. I ran past one nigga. I hit the gate, bop. Got a, went to the other one. That's why I got all these scratches. They had that little barbed wire. I instantly just, I jumped over the first barbed wire, but it was another one. Then I got through the other one. I just ripped it. That's why I got all this shit on me, you know, all this shit like this. And I'm up out of there. And I'm like, damn, what I do, what I do? I'm panicking. I start taking off my clothes. I took off my clothes. I threw something this way. I threw something that way. I threw something that way. And I ran a direction to where I didn't throw none of my clothes at. And then I threw another, and then I took off uh, my shoes through that shit, my, um, my, um. Why would you take off your shoes? What, you, what? <laughs> like, I understand what he's saying, maybe, like, throwing off the people pursuing him by, like, putting, like, clothes in other places, in other directions, but why would you take your shoes off, bro? Like, okay. The last thing I had was uh, my camera, and I was like, fuck. These niggas want this, they gonna stop and look at this shit. And I said on my camera, but they trying to kill me. That's what I said. And then I threw that motherfucker. And then I ran. And then somehow, bro, I got to this orchard and it was like a ditch. And it was like, damn, they got all this shit bot, like, bot, like uh, a booby trap. You feel me? I don't know if it's for animals or people, but it's a booby trap and it's barbed wire everywhere. So I gotta go through all the barbed wire. I'm climbing up a fucking building. My leg is broke. I'm on top of a fucking, um, roof and i get to this house it don't look like nobody in there i'll show you a picture of that and i go in the house and i go get a knife because i see like damn this shit in here and then i was like damn is anybody in here and when i looked in the room it was somebody asleep so i turned around hella fast i was scared that my leg snapped again bah! and i fell down and then he was like hey i got up ran outside I use one leg. So that is the third time that you're saying that your your broken leg snapped. It's, it's, I don't know about this leg, bruv. You got some Wolverine powers, bro. Like, you need to be in the X-Men, bruv, with all this snapping and put, popping back in place. You need to be in the X-Men, bro. Leg and did a double jump and then got on top of the roof and pulled myself up real quick. I don't know how I had all this strength by a lot, bro. But I, I, I did it and I pulled myself up and I had my hair and it was hanging. And then I seen a dude coming and he had a machete. He was like, hey, anybody, like basically anybody here, he's like, oi, 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 you know, Latins, you know, they do, they Latin, so they gonna say something in Spanish. But my only, I was like right over him, just say if somebody like right over somebody, like I could see him, but he ain't looking up. My hair was hanging and I was like, fuck, they gonna see me. So, I was like, man, and I just started thinking in my mind. I'm like, you know what? I already know what to do. I'm like, this is my energy. This is how I'm going to save myself. I cut off, I start cutting off my hair and I start putting it in a pile. And I was putting it in a pile. 
and I let it pile up till all my hair was gone. And then I just basically said, God, make me invisible. God, make me strong. God, make me smart. God, send me help. I need help. I'm on top of a fucking roof in Colombia in a barrio. I need help. And then I started throwing my hair in, a, in the direction that I was running down the hill in. So when the people came down, they would see like, oh, his hair, his hair right here. So hold on. This guy is on the roof. Then then the, his hair's hanging down somehow. Like, I don't know why he wouldn't be able to just, like, maneuver his hair so it's not hanging nowhere. Like, I don't know how long this guy's hair was. But then he started cutting his hair off on the roof, right? There's people looking for him around, and he managed to throw his hair from the roof. <laughs> from the roof. He threw his hair in, a, in another direction so to leave, like, fake clues for his pursuers this this story is just absolutely insane bro so i started and then i threw them off and i felt like that was my protection because every from from then i rate i rate that he prayed to the most high though yeah that's the this part of the story where he's talking about he prayed pray to god i could respect that because boy it's only God that can save you in this fantastical story, bro. Like, this is too fantastic right now. And I spent the night there. It was like three stalls. I spent the night in the second stall first. And then I got up and some told me to move to the third, st third stall. But when I stopped, like I said, I just was listening to God. And God was like, just be still. I got you. Be still. I got you. I promise you. By Allah, I was like, be still. I got you. So I was still. Nigga, yeah, my mama, nigga. Started thinking about my sister. Started thinking about my granny, daddy, everybody. I'm like, fuck, nigga, I'm in Colombia, nigga, finna get. Nigga, when you feel me? So I'm this guy's crying, bro. This guy is crying, fam. Like, this, this story is just like. I don't know. Like, this story. I don't know, bro. I just don't know, bro. I, I can believe that, yeah, like, he, he, this could have happened to a certain extent, but I don't know if all of these things he's saying are facts. That's the only thing that I don't know if this is all 100% what happened. Do you get what I'm saying? But anyway. I'm like, shit. So I'm like, I'm listening. I'm hearing people looking for me. They got dogs and shit. <sighs> Nigga talking about where he go. Donde esta, americano? I hear all that shit. I go to the other star. Well, I'm like, probably like when the, when, the, when the crows start going. And then the people who was in the house, they came out and started working. But all day, they never um, came to that third star. So I started building a barricade. Because I had buried myself under a lot of things. And then put a cover over the things. And then put some wood over that. So all day I'm hearing these people come in and out, do their laundry and everything. And then Andres was talking to somebody who was basically like a neighbor of them and was asking about me. I was like, hey, have you seen this dude? Some, some, you know what I'm saying? And I'm like, I don't know if it was Andres, but the people around the body heard about American running away. You know what I'm saying? Into the mountains. So long story short, I'm there, ain't got no water, food, nothing. I'm out there for like there two days, you feel me? So I'm like, man, I'm praying the whole time too. Like I got up, I did Fajra. I didn't get to do my rock outs, but I sat there and, and said the al -Fatiha, and I said, then the second prayer I did was, Bismillahirrahmanirrahim, Puhu Allah, Allah, and then I just waited. I was patient. Like God said, this your this your test. Like be patient. And I was patient. I didn't do nothing. And then I was getting up back and forth because my leg was broken. I needed to stretch it out, and it was uncomfortable. So every time I felt, I felt like nobody was. A Your leg was not broken, bro. Your leg was hundred percent not broken. Around, I get up, stretch a little bit, and I didn't really have no energy to get down this mountain. So I chilled. 
and, and for some reason, the people house who I was like hiding behind, they never came to that third star. So I kind of thought that they knew what was going on and they just didn't want to tell on me. And then they, the day passing, and then um, gracias a Dios, uh, Roberto, Jason, that he came and took a piss in that third star. He didn't even see me. I'm the one who moved and made him see me. But I was like, that's an old man. And I had seen him fixing the gate. You know what I'm saying? Earlier. So I was like, man, he cool. He would probably help me. And I was like, hey, por favor, yo tengo mamá, yo tengo papá, a, fa a familia, niños, niñas, hermanas, por favor, necesito, necesito ayúdame. Necesito ayúdame. Shh. No habla nada. Por favor, they're looking for me. That man saved my life. I feel like he saved my life. Because I'm like, at the end of the day, I didn't feel comfortable with the people that I was with. Because no friend is going to leave a other friend around friends who are basically... Nah. That guy was not your friend, bro. He was never your friend, fam. That guy was just a guy. That's all. He was a guy that you was giving money to. You was paying for, he, for him to eat. You was giving him money, bro. That was all, bro. And he saw you as a victim, as a mark. Yeah? And that was it. Not respectful or just like into shit. Like, I never had my friend from overseas and bring him... Jerry came with me to the Dubs, bro. And wasn't nobody even thinking about touching Jerry. They welcomed him because Jerry with me. Only something only thing that's gonna happen to, only how something that's gonna happen to Jerry is because of me. So a motherfucker can't tell me all oh, this and that because I've been in a position. That's why Andres, I'm like, bro, you really tried to do that to me? Yes! You are in a desperate third world country, yes. You're in a country where they 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 are Bro, they don't make a lot of money, fam. Yeah, so you got to understand where you're at, bro. Like, bro, this story is just long, fam. Like, you know, I'm sure that, you know, he did get robbed and stuff like that. But to me, this guy made a lot of, like, catastrophic mistakes, bro. Catastrophic at best, fam. Do you get what I'm saying? So... Like, we got to move on anyway to the next one, yeah? And if you're watching this, please get the likes up on the video. Don't forget to do that. All right, we're going to move on to the next story. Yeah, so we first of all, we had a black guy, yeah? Getting robbed or whatever. Now we're going to move on to this Caucasian guy from Germany. And he was in Colombia. So let's see what happened to him. Uh, three days ago... I arrived here in Colombia, it's the first time that I'm in South America and I was a victim of a drug robbery and so the story was uh, I was chatting with a local girl, she invited me to, uh, to her apartment. Women are dangerous, women are dangerous, women are dangerous bro, 2024. Guys need to get this through your thick heads, bro. Stop thinking with your little head and think with this one. <sighs> Guys are going to lose their lives over box. It's crazy. With a friend, they wanted to cook a local dish. And I thought it would be a very nice opportunity to meet local people. Because I'm traveling solo. I didn't know anyone here. And yeah, I went to their apartment everything was fine we were listening to music we were talking um, I didn't expect uh, anything bad but uh, at uh, this this guy's already making catastrophic mistakes you're gonna go to a foreign country where you do not speak the language you're going there by yourself then you're just going to somebody's house bro like what Bro, this is another one. You just you just asking for trouble, and again, I don't care what he's talking about. Oh yeah, I just wanted to eat food and listen to music. No, you wanted box, bro. Let's keep it real. You was hoping that this girl was gonna like you. You you fancy her. You was hoping she'll fancy you, and you know maybe you'll get lucky. That's what he's thinking. At some point, they offered me a 
drink, which was like a soft drink, a pink soft drink, very sweet. I was drinking a few sips and then after 10 or 15 minutes I lost the control over my body and from this moment on I um, have like a blackout. I woke up in the morning without my phone, without my bank card and then I somehow made it back to my hostel. I think I met a guy who paid a taxi for me because he said, uh, dude, you got robbed and uh, drugged. And then back at my hostel, I checked my emails on my laptop and I saw that they basically stole everything from me since they had the access of my face ID through my phone. They were able to see all my login data of my internet accounts, so my bank account and also my saving accounts. I'm a member of some crypto exchanges. These were my savings and they stole everything. I can show you the emails, I'm not lying. So what you see here is that they first changed the password of my Apple ID, then deactivated the tracking function of my phone and then also the connected bank to my PayPal account. They started to send money over to their uh, PayPal accounts. Wow. And then they went through my crypto exchanges like Binance, Bitpanda and Coinbase. Wow. And Yo, they went through everything, bruv. They went through his cryptos, bruv. Oh my days. These bro, like these these people are are bro, they're crafty, bro. Like this isn't even a joke thing, bruv. They didn't just go through his bank. They didn't just go through the bank details, bro. They went through the crypto. They went through the PayPal. They changed passwords. They cha they changed his Apple ID. Bro, listen. They changed his Apple ID, bro. So that my man could, there's no way they can, he, they can be stopped. Once they start their operation, it cannot be stopped, bro. This is mental, bro. And they sent over all the different kinds of... Uh cryptocurrencies I had. At Bitpanda they also sold my cryptocurrencies and sent all the money to their own crypto wallets and the damage in total is about 15,000 euros. Yo! Oh my days! They took 15 bags from this guy bro. 15 bags just because you wanted to go and get some vagina bruv you, and that vagina cost you minus fifteen thousand dollars bruv jeez <laughs> i told you new year's resolution point you must take on board women are dangerous fam real talk all my savings I had and then at the end they also completely changed the connected telephone number of my Apple ID so I already contacted the Apple support service but since they changed the telephone number of my Apple ID I'm not able to gain back the access of my Apple ID which means it's forever gone they wow. stole everything I calculated it today it is around fifteen thousand dollars so basically all the money i have and my savings and they stole my phone and now i'm in the situation where i don't have a phone no access to a bank account no money and i'm stuck here in medellin colombia on christmas day so yeah the past three days i was really depressed to be honest but i tried to ask myself what uh, life wants to tell me with it because as you might have noticed I had a beautiful time in the past three months I went through Central America and I had maybe the best time of my life I met so great people around the world and saw these beautiful locations and places and I, I really came here because I I was trusting in people, I had very good experiences and I didn't really expect that something like that would happen to me. I don't think that these girls... You, you need to just be like aware of danger bro, like you need... And this is why I'm doing this video for guys like that. 
That's why I'm doing this this reaction video, bruh. For guys like him, he's talking about he was going around and all of this and, you know, he was too trusting and he was trusting people. He's going to foreign countries. He don't even know the language like that. He, he meets some girl, probably met her on Tinder or whatever, swipe right, and she probably swiped right. She's, she's probably the best looking girl that's ever, he, he's ever seen. And then now, nah, boom, she's inviting him to her house giving him some soft drink next thing he's, he's he's blacked out bruv then the next thing he wakes up and all of his money's gone fifteen thousand dollars is gone fam now he's sitting in colombia on christmas day with no phone and no money bruv this is bruh that is scary bro and then, you know, when you go on YouTube, type in Colombia Nightlife, all you see is these videos where you see these guys walking through Medellin. Yeah, walking through Medellin. And you see all these sexy women, these sexy Colombian women walking past in like these tight dresses and stuff like that. Press one if you know what I'm talking about. Press one if you know what I'm talking about, fam. You go on YouTube, you watch all these Colombia Nightlife videos. And all you see is the, the guy, you don't see the guy, you just see the, 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 the cameras just pointing at all the girls and the girls just walking past, walking past, walking past. And it looks like, oh my God, that's a dream. So many bad bees everywhere. And they're so happy to date foreigners. Is that really the truth though? Like this guy got, he, he got, he got got, bro. Big up to uh, the UK economist for the super chat. He says, I don't understand why men go to countries that are considered, considered poorer and where many women are in survival mode. I'm not surprised this happened. The thing is, the reason why guys go to these poorer countries or these low economy countries is because when they go there, they can be the king. They can be Drake. Do you get what I'm saying? Because, you know, if you're going there with dollars or you're going there with pounds or you're going there with uh, Deutschmarks like this guy, bro, like your money is going to be of a higher, you know, you're going to get more bang for your buck. Do you get what I'm saying? Because you're obviously your currency is stronger than theirs. And then the value of things there is, is already low as well because it's a, got a low economy. So you're, you're basically going to be living like a king for like next to nothing compared to your home country yeah and because of that and we know hypergamy and we know that women they want to be with guys who have more resources and more money and etc etc yeah they feel like they'll be able to date really really attractive women in their country because we all know that in colombia they have very attractive women there you know, they've got the regular Latinas, they've got the Afro Latinas, the black um, Latino women there, you know, very, very attractive, you know, extra, et cetera, et cetera. So they're thinking like, raw, like maybe these kind of, this caliber of woman I can't get in my country, but if I go to Colombia now, I'll be able to date those type of bad bees. That's the reason why guys go there, bruv. Like they feel like they'll be able to do stuff there in terms of dating that they can't do in their homes home home native country now there are some guys that go there and then maybe they just want to travel and see somewhere different they want to experience like uh colombia as like a genuine tourist but you know a lot of guys are going there these days because they want to they they want to sleep with colombian women and that's why a lot of guys like this guy here are being targeted simples because if he never went to go to this girl's house he wouldn't have got robbed it's a simple thing Girls uh, who drugged me and uh, robbed me are like intrinsically bad persons, but maybe these harsh living Why have you turned on this funny music all of a sudden, bruv? Like you was talking normal without no music, then now all of a sudden you've got music there. Why? Some sad music. Conditions here made them, um, yeah, to become criminal. But still, I think it's not the right way, even though you're in a bad situation to harm others just to better your situation. Bro, you gotta understand, people are ruthless in this world, my guy. People are ruthless. People do not give a fuck, especially people that are living in countries where desperation is there, bro. They're living survival mode, bro, like. Anything goes by any means. They've got to eat. 
You're talking about in, in environments where people have got little kids that they got to feed, bro. They don't mind robbing you if it means that their family gets to eat. Robbing your iPhone, robbing your laptop, robbing your bank account, robbing, robbing your cryptos, bruv. They don't care, bruv. Because when they rob you, that might be able to feed their family for a year, bruv. It's real like that, at least six months. So they don't care. Like, so people, again, this is why videos like this, like this reaction video I'm doing right now is so important, bro. Like, because there's a dark side to this, oh, I'm going to go to Colombia and just date all these hot Col Colombian women. Bro, there's a dark side to it as well because there's, there, there's criminal organizations that they have specifically targeted gringos. Specifically. They know where you're going. They're watching you when you get off the airplane, bro. <laughs> Do you get what I'm saying? They know where you are. They know they, they what is it? Uh, they go to, where in Medellin. They know what clubs you're going to go to. You're going to go to Delirium and what was the other one? Delirium and um, Club Space and uh, Lo Loco Vida or something like that. They know where you're at, bro. So they send their workers, these, these hot chicks, they send them there to go and catch you lot slipping, bro. And this guy, he was there on his own. So I'm still disappointed, but um, yeah, now I'm in this situation. It's really shitty. <laughs> um, I don't know what to say. It's it's a shitty situation, and um, yeah, these the past three days have been really really hard for me, because I was at the point where I thought about to stop my YouTube project to stop my videos and go back to Germany, clear all things with my bank, with my lost money, with my lost phone. But somehow um, I thought about it and the thing is, if I now would go back to Germany, I would be in a really bad mindset. It's winter time, I lost a lot of money, I don't have a job right now. so. I think with this bad mindset and under these bad conditions it would be probably wrong to, to stop everything here now. So what I try to do is to yeah, explain to you guys what happened and uh, it is Christmas time. I set up a PayPal donation campaign and uh, buy me a coffee website where you could donate me a little bit. Brav. I hear that, man. I hear that. I hear that. I hear that. But, bro, right now, we're just trying to listen to stories like yours where guys are just getting messed up, bruv. But I watched another video. I think his life got sorted out. I watched him on another video where, like, you know, his friend is, is coming to Colombia to give get him a phone and give him some money so he's going to get out of there. So, yeah, we're going to move on to an another story, man. Right, everyone watching, make sure you hit the like button on this. We've got another story. So we've had a black guy that went to Colombia who he basically got taken to a mountain and nearly lost his life there. And then we've got this uh, um, German guy, white German guy, and basically he got robbed, yeah, um, and lost everything on Christmas Day. <laughs> this is sad. And now we've got an Asian guy who's going to tell us his story. Right, so let's get into this one. Um, big up to Unique for the super chat. Appreciate you, my bro. He says, King Riches, that German guy was lucky that only his money and phone were taken. He could have woken up in a, a bloodbath with an organ missing. Be wise, gentlemen, when it comes to women. Absolutely, bro. Like, big up Unique, man. Bro, like, this, this, is, a, this is a serious situation. This is not a joke at all. This is not funny at all. That like, this is real. Like, and you know, these are guys that are guys that live to tell their story. There's a lot of guys that are not making it out. Like they're getting deleted, all right? Because they want to go and get Colombian box. I don't know if it's worth it personally. I don't know if it's wor if worth it, bruv. Anyway, next one. I'm very lucky right now to be alive because uh, the story I'm about to tell you, there were points where I thought I might die. This was definitely the craziest experience of my whole life. And I hope people who watch this can learn from it, learn the lessons of 
you know how how to be careful how not to make the same mistakes that I and my friend did. The story starts off on 24th of November at my Airbnb. I rented a pretty nice Airbnb in Cali. It was um, an Airbnb that has a, had its own swimming pool. So my friend Karsh, who is living in Cali as well, he is like, I want to come over and check out your pool. And I also I want to invite one of my friends, Nicole, who he had talked about previously. And I think he had known her for a month. As far as I know, they were not romantically involved. I come home from my salsa class to my Airbnb rest up for an hour and around 7.30 p.m. Karsh arrives. And right after Karsh arrives, arrives uh, Nicole. And Nicole ends up showing up with her friend Natty, who I know for about a year. Again, I've met her a couple of times in my life and Karsh has also met Natty through me. And apparently Natty was who introduced Karsh to Nicole. So surprisingly, Natty shows up and again, at this point, we're like, whatever, cool. We're hanging out with them. Karsh had invited another friend. She shows up about half an hour after these girls. Karsha's new friend, her name's Giselle. She comes in and she's about to change. Natty and Nicole, the first two people who came, they ended up going into the room with uh, Giselle. And Giselle brought a friend, closed the room for five minutes, we assume they're changing. And after half an hour, Giselle decides to leave uh, with her friend. They leave and Karsh goes to drop them off to their Uber and then Karsh comes back. Karsh tries to tell me something. And Karsh says, hey, come here. And he tells me, Giselle was telling me something about stealing Nicole. Uh, is, was telling her that they want to steal from us. Uh, we take this information and we're like, okay, if they're going to steal from us, let's get out of here. So we're right away like, let's go to a bar. This is it, party's over here, let's go to a bar. And that, at that point, Natty goes into the bathroom to change. She's like, I need a lot of time to change. I need to like get ready. Nicole is like, oh, I have a friend who's dropping something off and I have to wait for her here. These girls are dodgy. Oh my days, bro. Oh my god. Are you not following this story? Hey, listen. You lot, press one in the chat. Are you not following this story, man? There's Nicole, there's Giselle, there's Gazelle, there's all these girls coming from nowhere. Just, oh yeah, I'm coming here. And now I've got to go here. Now I'm going to secretly stay in your room. And I've got to go in the bathroom. And I've got to do this. And I've got to... Bro... This guy is not serious, bruv. He's, he's not really, he's not taking control of, bro, they're in your place and they're going all over the house. Of course they're stealing. What the hell? You're just letting them just, oh, everyone have, all of a sudden they've come from wherever they've come from and now they're coming to your house and now all of a sudden they need to change. They need to do all this changing, bruv. What the hell? Fam, this is a joke thing, man. This is a joke thing. Big up Daniel for the super chat. Know the game you're playing. Always research the countries you're going to. Absolutely, bro. Like, you got to know the game you're playing and the players you're playing with. Yeah? Anyway. Uh, and we're like, no. Like, we're going to go to the bar now. and Have your friend come over to the bar. We try to push for it. And, like, we're trying to rush them out of the place. Long story short we don't succeed and we don't understand how grave the situation is so we also don't run away about 15 to 20 minutes later uh nicole's what do you mean you don't succeed tell them to get out of the house bruv how do you not what bruh like what do you mean you didn't succeed getting them out of the house see this is that soft that soft energy that like bro that beta energy bro like fam if it's time for someone to get out of your house, it's time for them to get out, bruv. I don't care who they are, bruv. Get out, bruv. Friend arrives and Karsh goes to check in on her. I call one of my other friends who, who lives in uh, Cali. I told him like, hey, something's going on. Like something doesn't feel right. Just in case, here's my address. And while I'm saying that, I feel a gun to my head. At this point, I only see one guy. He's coming to my Airbnb and he just snatches my phone and he's like, shh shows me his gun is loaded, ties up my hands, puts me in my room. And at this point, I have no idea where's Karsh, where's Natty, where's Nicole. I just see this guy and then they, after him, I see two or three other guys follow him. But you know, when they walked in, by the way, the first thing they said was, we're from the Kali cartel. I don't think that's true. At this point, they're like, yeah, you guys are being robbed. Give us everything you have. Uh, so. Since I've seen the bullets at this point, I just, I'm like, okay, here's all my cash. I guide them to everything they're probably potentially looking for. And let me say one thing, yeah. A lot of times when a lot of people get uh, murked, when they get deleted, 
um, a lot of times is because they resist getting robbed, right? A lot of guys are getting deleted because they want to resist from getting robbed. I suggest if you're in somewhere like Colombia and you're getting robbed, you better just hand over the stuff. The, the, those material things are not worth your life. And in my mind at this point, they're here to take our TVs. They're here to take our, um, like, you know, they're here to just rob the Airbnb and leave in a couple of hours. At some point they ask, hey, is anyone gonna come here? Is someone who's gonna come clean the pool the next day? So I informed them of that, thinking that this is gonna incentivize them to leave sooner. But that went the wrong way because later on I was informed by Nicole. So she tells us that these guys are here to use our credit cards. The main goal is to swipe our credit cards for multiple days. And I heard them talk in Spanish. They're gonna stay here till Sunday. They came in on a Thursday and they're gonna stay till a Sunday. So their plan was to do this for three days. Wow, uh, <laughs> oh my God. These are professionals, bro. Do you not, did you not just hear what they, what this guy said? These robbers, yeah, they've come into his house, home invasion, right? And it's obvious that these girls, all of this Nicole and Giselle and, and all these girls, they lined it up, bruv. They lined it up nicely, like a ruler. They lined it up, yeah? And basically, these guys are going to stay in the Airbnb for three days. And during those three days, they are going to swipe their credit cards to death. And these, uh, and meanwhile, while these their credit cards are being swiped, they're gonna be tied up and bound inside the Airbnb, bro. Like this is, wow, <laughs> wow. Do you know what? I'm not gonna lie. I like the I like the UK, bro. I like living in England still. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, the, the weather might be crap. Yeah, it might be expensive to live here, but guess what? I know the levels here. I know the levels here, bro. Like, like, like bro, Colombia just sounds nuts, bro. Like, this is a crazy thing. Anyway, let's, let's carry on. Now that I told them someone might come to clean the pool, they're like, okay, we need to get them out of here soon. So they start scheming how to, what to do with that information. And meanwhile, I'm like, hey, please, can you put me and Karsh together? They do that. They're nice enough to at least put us uh, in the same room. At some point we ask for water. Uh, I drink half of it. Karsh realizes the water is drugged, so he refuses to drink it. And they put a gun to his head, get aggressive with him and make him drink the whole drugged water. And this water was meant to make us feel very drowsy. It was slightly yellowish in color. And by the way, all these robbers were just doing drugs. They're snorting stuff. They're kept offering us stuff. And we're obviously like, no. They did give me a beer, which was my own beer. So I, I drank it literally hands tied drinking a beer like that. Honestly helped me relax in such a stressful situation. Meanwhile, my friend uh, who was calling to give my address and I couldn't, kept calling me. So Nicole picks up the phone at some point and tells me, hey, tell him everything's okay. And then I was forced to tell him everything's okay because there's a guy with a gun. Any movement we make, we're gonna go to the washroom. This guy with a gun follows us. We're not able to do anything basically. And at this point, yeah, they're like, where's your laptop? They go through all my cash. They take my Russian cash, Indian currency, like everything. They do give us our passport. That was very nice of them, I guess. The only nice thing they did is at the beginning, they found our passports, handed it to us. So they came in at 10 p.m. Around 1 a.m., they tell us the plan. They're like, you're gonna be taken away from here uh, to a hotel because we feel it's dangerous here. Someone might come in. We're gonna basically kidnap you and take you to a hotel. So at this point, I'm like, okay, I need some clothes if we're gonna be gone for three days. And I remember I had an extra phone hidden in between my stack of underwear. So when I go into my little wardrobe room where I have my clothes, I'm able to use one of my hands to email my friend who was calling me 20 times, uh, who I tried to give my address saying, I'm getting kidnapped, this is my address, send the police. Like, there's a guy with a gun looking at me, but with my right hand, I was able to send this email out. And right after- What? Nah, that, that sounded a bit too fantastical. I was, I, I was with you in this story, even though this is a very extreme story, I was with you up to this point of, you are in the room, a man's got a gun to your head, and somehow your hands are tied, but you was able to text. You was, <laughs> you was able to send an email on your spare phone, yeah? And the guy with the gun did not see you sending an email on your phone. Um, 
I don't know, bruv. I don't know. I mean, maybe it happened. I don't know how you, I would, I'd like to see like a reenactment of how this happened, bro, to be honest. After I sent that email out, basically we're taken away. At that point, like the drugs started hitting both me and my friend. We don't remember. Everything else after that is a blur of how we got there. Like there are two different cars. We got put in the cars. And then once we get to the hotel, the guy who receives us, I'm going to call him the homicide guy. He was very aggressive. So far, all these guys were not like kind of touching us. They're just pointing guns at us. This guy was like hitting us on our head and just like, look down, look down. The moment we arrived, he's like, just like holding our heads and making sure we look down, don't look up. But anyways, whatever we, from what we could see, this was a very sketchy hotel, people doing drugs, prostitutes all around. They take us all the way to the fourth or fifth floor. This hotel was- Oh, so he showed us the hotel, bro. This guy's showing us like locations in that pal metal, bruv. Pal, pal, ma, pal, ma, leg, te, bruh, mad, bruv. Anyway, that's the hotel there. I right, big up Tyrone James for the super chat. He says, now I understand why people seek asylum in the UK, etc. Bro, bro, London is dangerous, but bro, like, I, I don't think it's as dangerous as Colombia, bro. I'm not, I'm not gonna lie to you, bruv. <laughs> I'm not gonna lie to you. Like, girl, like in London, g girls do set up guys in London, absolutely, and that's been going on from day from back in the day. Do you get what I'm saying? But, bro, this these stories that I'm reacting to are just absolutely incredible, and this one is like the the craziest one. But anyway. It's called Palmetto Hotel. It's in this very shady part of the city. And then at first they tried to separate us into two rooms, but then we asked for it. They put us in the same room. And then Nicole comes in. She's on the phone with some guy. Let's call him the gringo because it was a person who spoke American English and barely spoke Spanish. And that person tells us, hey, th these guys are not going to kill you. But if you don't follow what they ask you, they're going to kill you. Uh, and he was, again, like, the plan is for them to use up your credit cards. Tomorrow morning, they're going to go out, use your credit cards, debit cards. So at this point, both me and Karsh were just trying to sleep. At every point inside the room, there's two guys with guns looking at us. But it's somewhere between two to four guys coming in and out, Nicole coming in and out, asking us, oh, is this your, whose credit card is what, whose ID is what, sending pictures of all our credit cards to uh, this gringo guy over WhatsApp. His name was saved as 222. I could not fall asleep because I, I was so stressed. Karsh, on the other hand, because he drank the whole drug thing, he passed out. I wish I drank all of it, honestly. Or maybe I don't. Who the hell knows what it was? You know, time passes by. They're playing music while we're sleeping because they are not allowed to sleep because they have to keep an eye on us. So it's very hard to sleep. At some points, like, you know, if I turn around while sleeping, this guy would just like move my head back and put me in that same position. So like, literally I'm sleeping with pain because I can't even move my body. The morning comes along, they order some food using our Uber Eats, like Rappi, the local app. Nicole, the organizer of the kidnapping, the girl, she comes in and she's like, okay, it's time. She makes me talk to the gringo again. He explains all the plan to me again. And at this point, first they deal with Karsh. Uh, they make Karsh make some transfer wise transfers and then they deal with me and with me they're like we're gonna be using uh, your debit credit cards because they got all my cards because they it was my Airbnb that they robbed so they explained to me I'm gonna call my banks and make sure um, I authorize the transactions so I'm like okay I'll do whatever you guys want they take my um, credit card pin numbers my um, phone pin, my laptop and again we don't have access to our phone laptop they've taken everything away homicide guy another guy and Nicole split off and go out to basically start making purchases using our credit card. And the, these two guys, let's call them the Morenos, uh, the Morenos stay with us and they obviously have a gun and they keep us in the room. We ask them, how long is it going to take? When are we going to be free? They're like, we don't know. But when they're talking in Spanish, I understand their plan is to keep us till Sunday. They leave, uh, leave around 10 a.m. Uh, and then these two guys are watching us and then from 10 a.m. to 12 p.m. very uneventful I'm just waiting for that call where they're gonna ask me to call my bank never get that call And then after 12 p.m. I notice the Morenos as well start getting impatient They're like, hey, where are you guys? Why are you not coming back? And they're also getting very nervous They keep looking out of the window of the hotel room seeing like if anyone's coming end up making us change rooms and we end up moving to a floor one floor higher and to a corner uh, hotel room where you know there's not that many people passing by I speak Spanish decently well to understand what what's going on what are the kidnappers talking about and around 1 30 p.m. I figure out that the Morenos are being screwed over by the other group because yeah 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 they're being screwed over bruv 
So basically, they're just gonna sit there watching you lot in the hotel while these the other ones they're just gonna go and live their movie, bro. They're just gonna be swiping credit cards and buying fajitas, bro. <laughs> they're gonna be buying fajitas and iPhones, bro. Yeah, and for anyone that wants to know, this guy's channel is Abby Shake. Yeah, it's Abby Shake YouTube channel, right? And the other channel was Doctor Travel. The, the German guy that got robbed for 15k, his channel's called Dr. Travel. But anyway. They're being told that, hey, these guys don't have any money on their card, so we haven't been able to get any money. When I hear that, I ask Karsh, I'm like, hey, Karsh, let's let them know. I think they're being screwed over, and maybe that way we can negotiate directly with these guys. So I tell the Morenos, he's like, hey, you guys have my phone, open all my bank accounts, and see how much money has been withdrawn. And we open our bank accounts, and guess what? They've already withdrawn like six, seven thousand dollars. So I tell the Morenos, I'm like, hey, these guys are screwing you over. Let's try to do this. We'll send you money directly, and then you let us go. Uh, and at first they're like, oh no, we can't do that. But then as they were getting impatient too, and they wanted to go home, uh, they're also like, okay, we can make something work. So they didn't have PayPal. They only had Colombian e-transfer called Neki. I call one of my Colombian friends and I ask her, hey, can you send? Two million pesos, about six, seven hundred dollars on Nikki to these guys. She's like, okay, she notes down the number and she's like, okay, let me call you back. And in 10 minutes, she calls back. She's like, how about I come to your address and give the money in person? So the Morenos freak out. They literally hang up on her. They're like, what the hell? She's trying to screw us over. And in my mind, I'm like, oh my God, why couldn't she just make the transfer? I'm really mad. Oh, uh, that shit completely messed everything up, bruv. <laughs> She doesn't understand that you're in a dangerous situation, that, that you're having guns pointed to your head, and she wants to kind of confuse it. Bro, every bro, like, guys, yeah, let me just say one thing, yeah. Whenever you've got anything important going on, just, bro, bro. <laughs> Let's just put it like this. Involve the least amount of people as possible. And always, if you do need people involved, always have people involved who think logically, bruv. Yeah? Who think logically. Most of the time. Okay? At this point. So I'm like, okay guys, Morenos, I'll find another friend. Let's increase the 2 million or 2.5 million. Whatever it takes. You know, like they have like 3 million and they're like, no, no, no. We can't do this. And then later on, they called some friends and they found out a friend who has PayPal. So I'm like, okay, I'll PayPal you money. So then I make a first PayPal transfer of $1,000 and they call their friend and the friend's like, yeah, I got an email, like this is working. They make me make another transfer and then they obviously get greedy and they're like, oh, can you make another one? And I'm like, no, my PayPal is going to get blocked. So this is it. And they believe me and they're like, okay, sure. And then I'm like, okay, so I paid you now, get me out. Um, and at that point they're like, okay, get dressed, get ready. We get ready and then they get a call and they're like, oh no, we can't go anymore. Uh, and we're like, why? They're like, yeah, these guys are coming back soon. This was where one of the scariest moments happened, at least for me, I don't know about Karsh. One of the Moreno guys who was holding the gun, he gets a call, he picks it up, and he hangs up, doesn't say anything, picks up his gun, loads it, and then he wraps it around a towel. And he just, you know, like it felt like he's trying to silence the gun, and he just points it at Karsh. And in my mind, I thought this was it. Like he got a call <laughs> to finish us up and he just points it. And I was like, he might shoot. Like, why does he have a towel wrapped around? But he didn't. I mean, again, these were tactics to scare us, get us to shut up and be really scared and, you know, give more money. Then at some point, these Moreno guys also mentioned, oh, the plan for the other group of guys, like the homicide guy, what the instructions are to chop your bodies and mix it with the cement of this hotel. As 90% sure. Did you just hear that? Fam. The plan is to chop their bodies up and mix it with the cement. <sighs> Bro. All this for box. All this for vag. Fam. Uh, nah, bruh. Uh, nah. You won't, you, you won't see King Rich's making this kind of video oh i got robbed like in colombia this ain't gonna happen to me bro 100 percent. like you you lot was inviting all these strange girls to your airbnb and next thing 
these these next guys come into place, home invasion. Next thing, you've been kidnapped and you're sitting on the floor in some strange, disgusting hotel, bruv. Yeah? Bruh. Bruh. <laughs> Or they're bluffing in these situations you don't know these guys are smoking weed all day snorting drugs they're high out of their minds they can do anything at any moment around that time like life was very uncertain like the probability was changing like at some point i'm like, okay i'm 90 percent sure they won't kill us but then when their towel wrapping happened i was like 50 50 they might shoot us or like i don't know so this all happened between three to four and then Around 4 p.m., the other group comes back. So it's Nicole, homicide guy, and the third guy who is their driver, basically. They come back, and the moment they come in, there's a huge argument in Spanish. Everyone's yelling at each other. The Morenos are blaming the homicide guy. The homicide's blaming Nicole. And in the end, the homicide guy calms everyone down and is like, okay, let's agree. Nicole is the one f***ing everyone over. Let's kill her. And he takes a towel and literally narco style, wraps around, wraps it around her face as if he's gonna choke her to death. And he kind of like tightens it, and then she starts yelling and screaming and crying, and then he just takes it off. But in that moment, for me at least, I was like, I am gonna see a person die in front of me. It looked very damn serious. Again, who knows? This guy, the way he is telling this story is a bit too like comical in my opinion, bruv. For somebody that, you know, has been held at gunpoint in a hotel for a couple of days and he's been robbed for everything, like, you're a bit too comical. It could be his character, but like, bro, it's a bit strange to me. But anyway. Maybe it was a tactic to scare her. It did work. She started crying. And then what happened is the gringo guy, who apparently is the mastermind of this. So the gringo guy turns out is the boyfriend of Nicole who hired, both of these guys hi have hired these four thugs from the streets who are helping them out. And now these thugs are pissed that they're not getting enough money. For example, the Morenos, I heard them talking. I overheard them. They're like, hey man, on a normal day, we could have stolen five phones. Today we're, you know, holding these Canadians hostage and we haven't even gotten any money. So you can tell these, these guys, street thugs, except for the homicide guy, they all just wanted to make a quick buck. Uh, and they weren't making much money yet. Yeah, because they're all trying to make a quick buck because they live in a low economy country and they're all on survival mode. And this is the point. Like, if you are a man or anybody that is going to one of these, like, you know, low economy countries, you got to understand there's a lot of people who are on survival mode and they will not feel no way about robbing you. They won't even, and there's a lot of people that won't feel no way about deleting you and chopping you up and mixing you into cement. Do you get what I'm saying? Like, this is, this is a serious thing. I don't think people really understand you going around traveling to different countries, bro. I mean, I'm not against it. I'm not against it at all. And I'm not even saying people should not go and see Colombia and travel. But, bro, you go in there and you think that you're going to go and get uh, all bad bees. You, you're going to go and live a music video. You're going to go and live there and pretend that you're, you're Rick Ross or you're Drake or somebody, bro. Like, bro, like, I feel sorry for you because you are playing Russian roulette, my friend. Nicole calls a gringo and she's like, everything that's happening, like, everything's falling apart. And then the gringo tells me, it's like, transfer me more money so I can transfer these guys money. And I'm like, no, but these guys want money right now. And the homicide guy's like, I want to buy gold or a motorcycle. At this point, I'm translating between them because gringo barely speaks Spanish. Uh, other guys, they barely speak English and Nicole is just crying. At that point, the gringo is like, okay, do whatever they say. If they want gold, buy them gold. And by the way, the other thing is at this point, when they walked in, the other group who used my credit cards and walked in, uh, they came in with a couple of iPhones, a huge stash of cash. They had made enough purchases. And when I looked at my bank account, they'd wiped out some eight to ten thousand dollars, and they'd also made cash transfer wise about ten thousand dollars by this point. And they're like gold. Oh, so they basically had taken twenty thousand dollars from both of you collectively. This is the last demand. The homicide guy is like, this is the last thing. That's all we want. After this, we'll let you go. But in my mind, I'm like, I keep hearing your plan is until Sunday. So I don't trust you, but what is my option for survival? If I refuse, you might hit me. Or like, if I really try to run away, you're probably gonna, you might even kill me. So 
my only option is okay follow them so we split into two groups at this point myself homicide guy and nicole and the driver in one red car and then karsh with the two morenos uh, and some other random girl who joins us in like an old beat up car. We drive to the center of Kali, we stop at the first gold store and my vibe was completely off. Like I was just looking if I can run away because it's a crowded area. Homicide guy and Nicole were like trying on different pieces of gold. They didn't like it and they're like, okay, let's go from here. Then the homicide guy grabs me and he's like, dude, act more chill. Like the way you're acting right now, people are gonna know something's off. Like you have to act like you're our friends, otherwise I'm gonna shoot you. So then we drive around for another half an hour to a completely different neighborhood, find another gold store and they don't accept credit cards. So then they're like, oh, what do we do? And I'm like, guys, just use Google Maps and find a gold store. And then they do that, come back, literally back, come back to the center and on the way by the way at this point Nicole is crying uh, she reveals that she's pregnant for one and a half months with the gringo's baby and then what the hell kind of stupid story is this man this Nicole oh Nicole's crying Nicole was crying now our next thing Nicole's telling everyone you lot included the people that they've kidnapped Nicole's telling you how she's pregnant for the guy's baby the, the guy the, like this story is stupid and the homicide guy reveals he has three kids. Uh, he just got out of jail for, guess what, homicide. That's why he's the homicide guy. And at that point, like, I, I'm just trying to survive. So instead of being depressed, I start making jokes with the homicide guy. I'm like, dude, your accent sounds really funny to me. I want to speak like you. And then the homicide guy's joking about me. He's like, oh, what are you going to do after this whole kidnapping thing? How, like, how long are you going to stay in Colombia? And I was like, yeah, I'm going to leave probably as soon as possible and honestly i'm laughing so you you're so you're saying that you and the guy with that's talking about he's gonna murk you are, are cracking jokes together <laughs> what and um, big up to uh what t t youth for the super chat he says why do you think celebrity celebrities has bounced off for traveling bro i'll be real with you and i said this to somebody i said this to my friend like the other week i was like bro if i was in colombia bro i'm definitely rolling with security bro definitely bro like this isn't a joke bro like bro i ain't gonna try and pretend like i i'm the, the macho man or whatever i'm i'm a g or whatever nah fam i'm not in my own territory i'm not home and i know that i'm in a place that's very dangerous bro a lot of people get robbed they get drugged and they get murked so obviously uh, you just need to take precautions even if I was, bro, and no matter where I would go, if I'm in some country where I know a lot of people are on survival mode, guess what? I'm going to pay for, you know, a, a security guard at the gate of where I live. You know, there needs to be security where I live. And, and bro, if I'm really going to go about, and I, you know, and it could be potentially a bit sketchy, I need to be with people that, boom, like that it is their job for my safety is their job. You know what I mean? Not like it's a friend thing, like, oh, this guy's my friend and he's taking me around. No, this guy is a paid guy, bro, like, to make sure my security is his job. <laughs> Do you get what I'm saying? Real talk. So, yeah, anyway. And myself and laughing with them at this point, you know, building rapport was the most important thing. And, you know, they also started talking about their life, how poor they are. I'm sharing with them about, you know, life in India and how... Poverty in India has different outcomes. Like it's just not manifested in as much violence like Colombia. And it was interesting. They were actually very curious. After I built that rapport, I felt like I didn't feel that type of aggression from the homicide guy where I was scared of him. But now we arrive at the final gold store, homicide guy, Nicole, uh, and this random girl who was in Karsha's car also gets off and we're all buying gold. And they're, you know, all trying different chains. They buy six chains, six gold chains. Homicide guy gets himself a ring. And then, yeah, Nicole is trying to act like my girlfriend and, you know, just like, you know, a asking me like, uh, oh, baby, what do you want? What do you like? Just so that it looks like I'm making the decision because my card is going to be used. So I'm able to play it off pretty cool because I'm also in a better mood by now. In the end, yeah, they ended up buying gold with $2,000. I try my credit card at first, it doesn't work. And then second attempt, it did end up working. Um, and while we're leaving, Homicide guy's like, oh, let me buy more, let me buy more. Nicole's like, no, we need to get out. We need to get out. And my agreement with them was, if I buy gold, I'm not getting back onto the car because once I get onto the car, they can take me wherever they want again. So I get out and then homicide guy tries to drag me to the red car. 
where Karsha isn't even there. And I'm like, no, 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 no. I bought you guys gold say, and you guys said you'll release me. Like you have to, you can't take me back now. And then he's like, no, you have to come with me in that car. And I was like, I can run right now. Like, like it's the center of the city. And he's like, okay, if you, if you leave and run, like your friend's still here. And then basically we negotiate and they, they're like, okay, you know what? You can get onto the car with your friend where the Moreno guys are there. A woman who was in the old beat up car gets off and I get in instead of her. And I turn back to see Karsh and I kid you not, I feel like this stinging pain in my left eyeball. And, and what I realize has happened is one of the Moreno guys was holding a gun really up close and I turned into the gun. Honestly, that was also scary. I had no idea what hit me in the eye. And then I look and I'm like, damn, a gun just went into my left eyeball. And then I asked the Moreno guys like, hey, are you letting us go? Because we're very close to our home now. And the Moreno guys are like, no, we're taking you to Yumbo, which is basically like 20 minutes outside of Cali. And I'm like, no, 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 no. Whoa, you can't take it like them man want to take you somewhere else, fam, bro. Like, yeah, 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 yeah. They, that, <laughs> the Moreno said, we're taking, to, taking you to Yumbo. Yeah, we're taking you to Yumbo with the strap in your face, bro. They were taking you to final destination. That's where they're taking you to, bruv. Yeah, that's, uh, bro, this is mad, fam. Like, we literally PayPal'd you guys money directly. We showed you that you're getting screwed over by the other group. And now you repay us by taking us to Yumbo and not letting us go. And they're like, no, I understand. You, like, you've been very helpful to us. They kept saying this phrase. Si, si usted colabora con nosotros, nosotros colaboramos con usted. Which is, if you collaborate with us, we collaborate with you. And I gave them that phrase back. I'm like, guys, we collaborated, like, let us go. And I don't know, maybe it was their plan all along or they had a change of heart. I don't know what happened, but they drive for five blocks in the center of the city. They stop at some point. They're like, okay, we're gonna, you're gonna get out now. Don't run, don't go to the police. Just quietly walk out. It was around, what, 8 p.m. We got kidnapped at 10 p.m. So 22 hours later, we get released in the rain um, in the center of Cali. First things first, we need to find a phone, like get to Karsh's place who had not been robbed and use his phone to call our family. So we get there, I call my family, I call my friend who I had told I've been kidnapped and he said he's been at the military station all day and the military is coming to see us. Uh, about 45 minutes later, the Colombian military came to pick us up. Oh, and so this is real, bruv. This is for real, bro. Like, this is a real story, bro. Like, like man sharing receipts and that. Obviously, the faces are covered, but bro, hey, this female police officer is thick still, you know. <laughs> <laughs> bruh this this female what from behind anyway you don't know what she looks like from the front but anyway women are dangerous the first thing we were hungry for 24 hours by the way the last meal we had was some mcdonald's that they fed us uh the day before at my airbnb they bought some breakfast but we didn't have appetite uh so we were hungry for 24 hours and the first thing the military does is takes us to my airbnb to for me to grab some stuff and then karsh figures out the location of his iphone so we they're like let's go catch them now and we're like why do you need us they're like if you're not there we can't identify them and we're also like angry so we're like let's go catch them we look around the iPhone area, it's a residential area, we don't see anyone. Uh, and then Karsh logs into his Rappi, his Uber Eats, and it's like, hey, look, we have the exact address where the hotel was. So we go to that hotel and we recognize the hotel right away and we're like, we tell the military, there's like six of them. So we walk in to the hotel with military. Military walks us to the fourth and fifth floor where we're staying. But what was interesting was the actual rooms where we stayed, none of them were opened up. The hotel just was just like, oh, someone's staying there, we can't open it. So that was a bit sketchy. Um, and then we spent about an hour, the military questions, the people there. And then we just end up going to the military base around like 11 p.m. And there we meet our friends who are they're all day like hats off to them for spending like 14 hours of the whole day just pressuring the military to look for us and we also realized that the canadian embassy had been involved by this point like people had been looking for us all day long uh, but we didn't get that feeling neither did the robbers the robbers had no idea that we were being looked for but uh, karsh did do a good thing he kept pressuring the robbers saying that the canadian government's going to get involved if you you know if we're disappeared for more than a day so like let us go let us go so definitely all, all the all of that pressure that came from you know our end saying that brother you was lucky bruv that's all i'm gonna say you was lucky you was very very fortunate very very extremely fortunate because really and truly 
you're 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 talking about your friend told the robbers that oh the Canadian government's gonna get involved, bruv. Like they could have murked you and that would have been it, bruv. No one would have known anything, bruv. Do you get what I'm saying? You you're lucky you didn't get mixed into cement. That's all I'm gonna say. That's all I'm gonna say about it. You're lucky you didn't get mixed into cement. Alright? But boy. I don't know. What do you lot think about it, man? Are you lot still, like, <laughs> bro? A lot of, uh, bro, a lot of you guys, yeah, a lot of you like passport bros or guys that want to travel and go South America because you want to go and you want to date South American women. You've been watching all these passport bro channels or Colum travel ch channels or you've been watching Colombia nightlife videos. You know, and now you're thinking, bro, I want to go. I, I want to go and see them girls, like, bro, like. Be careful, bro. <laughs> Be careful. I'm not telling you guys not to... I'm not telling you guys what to do at all. I'm just reporting what is going on out there, bro. And it's, it's danger. There's danger out there. And a lot of you guys, you go to these countries, you don't even speak the language. You don't even speak a little bit of Espanol. Hablas Espanol. You don't even speak it, bro. Do you get what I'm saying? And you want to go over there and think you're going to go and live your movie, bro. Like, fam, again, that movie just might be Final Destination, fam. Like, that's all I'm going to say. Anyway, listen, with that being said, all of you, get the likes up on the video. Uh, let me know what you think about it in the comments below this video. Very important that you do that. Bro, like, it's King Riches. I'm signing out, man. I'll be back again with more videos tomorrow. So look out for that. And yeah, man, listen, look after yourselves, man. And listen, I ain't got nothing against Colombia. Colombia is a great, uh, you know, I'm sure it's a great place to go, you know, to visit, you know, see the sights and stuff like that, experience the culture and stuff like that. But, you know, by these three accounts and by other accounts I've seen, you know, it's a very dangerous place. Like, do you get what I'm saying? So if you do go there, you need to go there with your, 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 your wits about you, right? Because I'm hearing that, like, you know, you can't even be walking around with your phone. Like, you can't even just have your phone out, like, because people will rob you. You Like, me personally, I wear jewellery in it. I got jewellery in it. Like, you get me? Like, if I was walking around like this, I'd be a target. Do you get what I'm saying? Like, so, really and truly, you have to be very, very, very cautious of what you're doing. Understand the place that you're in. Right? Because, boy, you don't want to end up a statistic out here. It's real like that. You do not want to be a statistic. Like, listen, it's 2024. Guys have to be smart out here, bro. All right? It's 2024. Guys need to be smart out here. And anyway, with that being said, you lot, you lot take care of yourselves, man. Yeah? And with that being said, I'm signing out. It's been real. Peace.